Hi, I've got some stuff, and we all know what that means. I'm playing with myself again. No, seriously, I am. Greetings, the Astro 30 here yet again. Um, I have to be a little bit quiet at the moment because my housemate is still asleep next door and I don't want to wake him up unnecessarily. Now, I've been to JCAR and I've got some plethora of stuff here. $79 worth, actually. Um, some more alligator clip leads because I'm finding when I'm testing stuff, I'm always one lead short. Typical. Got a high quality 8 inch woofer. It's a response driver CW2196. They're about 45 bucks. Also got a CT1930, which is a tweeter, the same as that horn tweeter in the box. I've got the standard grey speaker cable, 2 meters of, and some alkaline AA batteries for my multimeter because they're going flat. Some more spade terminals. And I've even mounted a power board at the back of the desk there to make it easier to plug things in and out so I'm not crawling around on my hands and knees on the floor. Now, before I get into all this stuff, I want to answer a question that was left on a previous video. How can this be classed as a lab without any equipment? Well, let me clarify. I do have equipment. Some of it is in storage. Also, as you can see, this is a small area. There's not enough room to have the test equipment on the desk all the time at the same time. I also use this desk for other things like putting my laptop on. So there's that. Also, the term lab is subjective. It can mean different things to different people. To me, a lab is a place of experimentation, research and development. And I tend to do all three. I really shouldn't have to justify why I call it what I call it, but that's why I call it that because I do do a lot of investigation, experimentation, research, and some development, as well as fun things to the channel. I mean, there wouldn't be any video content if this didn't exist. Anyway, that aside, I managed to get some PCB pins to solder into this crossover. They are a little bit crooked, but yeah, I'm trying to put a one millimeter pin into a two and a half millimeter hole. And I've touched up some solid joints on the back of here too, but whoever assembled this, it was obviously assembled by hand, they've used way too much solder. Look how much that's boiling. That is way too much solder. Way too much solder. So this would be a home-built project that uh, the seller probably on eBay makes himself. Gets these PCBs manufactured at probably JLC PCB or something. Um, very low quality PCB material. Uh, puts them together and flogs them off on eBay. Uh, he does have various different other crossovers there as well, two-way, three-way, um, etc. So, yeah. Anyway, first things first, I'm going to open this whooper. No, I'm not. There we go. Now the good thing about these is they come with this plastic protective cover so you can put it flat down on a surface to work on it without damaging it. But it's got a decent sized magnet on it, look at it. Now it's 8 ohms and it's DC resistance is 6 ohms by the way. Uh, the RMS power, I really wish they wouldn't use that term, but average power is 90 watts continuous. Maximum power is 180 watt peak. Uh, 89 decibel. The frequency response is 38 hertz to 4.5 kilohertz and its resonant frequency is around 28.3 I believe it is. For all those speaker aficionados there in the comment land. Okay, open the tweeter here. As we can see it looks similar. But it 
actually looks better quality than the one that's in it. So, there we go, there's the tweeter. So I suppose the most obvious thing to do is to make sure that the drivers are going to fit. I'll just take this base driver and the outer ring may be a bit bigger but it should fit in there. Tweeter, perfect match. Okay, time to take it apart. So that's what I mean about the ends of the screws being rusted. Those are out of the tweeter. Mm. Looks a little different than the other one, but anyway. Oh, like a glove. Gonna have to put new holes in it though. But that's perfectly fine. Looks better already. <laughs> uh, will the grill fit over that? Because I might have to replace that too. Yeah, it doesn't quite fit over the top of it properly. That's all right, I'll go out and get another grill. Uh, proper metal one, this one looks like crap anyway. Okay, so I need to solder some wire onto this and find where my PCB header connectors are and make it fully disconnectable from the crossover because it's got to come apart again anyway. There we are then. I've got them soldered to the speaker and I've put some heat shrink just over the bit where it's crimped so it doesn't look so ugly. Put a drop of solder on either crimp just to make sure. These PCB pins aren't that um, hard to crimp really with a pair of pliers. So this should make it easier plugging it into the crossover. Or at least that's a theory anyway. There we go. Plugged in. Just going to drill two pilot holes from there. The screws. Okay. Actually, I might drill more. screws for now to do. Oh, you bastard. Okay, so I'm going to temporarily connect uh, some clip leads to the binding post and I think the polarity really matters that much. Okay, that is negative. All right, fair enough. All right, that's negative. There, that one's positive. Okay. I 
had to redo the negative connection on this one because um, it didn't quite fit over the PCB pin. But that's alright. It fits now. That's the main thing. That way is going to get in my way. Again, I'm just using two screws for now, just to hold it in. Because it's all got to come back apart. Plus I'm going to replace the screws with some decent ones, not these crappy things. Alright, we are done. Check that out. Looks so sexy, doesn't it? Look at those crap things on the floor. Just a quick uh, way to check to see if the thing's working. Take a 1.5 volt battery. Yes, it is. But I can hear the tweeter. Hmm. Shut up. All right, got everything set up now. I'm not really interested in the low end response at the moment. Only the high end. Sounds roughly similar, so it made absolutely not much difference. I guess it's just the nature of these piezo uh, tweeters. They just sound harsh. Anyway, it'll probably still do for what I want to do with it, which is put an amplifier in it, which has its own treble control on it anyway, so that shouldn't be an issue. I was going to replace the bass driver anyway, and the tweeter just so they're brand new. Uh, other than that it's it's fine the way it is I suppose. Anyway I'm gonna think I'm gonna end this video here. I can't do much more to it except play around with the um, high end of the tweeter by adding in res serious resistance or something you know like that. An adjustable uh, crossover would have been probably more better but anyway I'm the Astro30 and if you enjoyed this video please remember to rate, comment and subscribe below and you can always follow me on Facebook and you can become a Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. Anyway, this is the Astro30 saying see ya. Happy bass drivers. <laughs>